Assalamu alaikum In the previous video we talked about skin and mucous membrane and the topic of this video is inflammatory response inflammation and phagocytosis In the previous video we talked about the intact skin that the intact skin is the first line of defense against many organisms as long as the skin remains intact the pathogens or organisms that can cause infection can not can not enter into the body but when there is an injury the dam- when there is injury damage to the epithelial lining of the body the organisms get a portal of entry through which they can enter into the body when <coughs> the infectious agents enter the body the body produces an inflammatory response against them the purpose of this response is to trap those pathogens and kill them and then those pathogens are removed from the body so inflammatory response is a protective response that the body produces in order to get rid of those infectious agents so we can say that the presence of foreign bodies such as bacteria within the body provokes an inflammatory response a protective inflammatory response the inflammatory response is characterized by clinical findings and these clinical findings are called the five cardinal signs of inflammation first one is the rubor which is latin for redness these are all latin names and their translation uh, i will tell you the translation of all these latin words rubor means redness swelling is called tumor then calor is known as the warmth when there is inflammation there is increased blood flow and due to that there the area becomes warm then dolor which is called as pain and then the, there is a loss of function when ever there is an injury to any body part that body part loses its function if the injury is very severe these signs appear when there is inflammation and what is the reason of these signs the first reason is the increased blood flow to the area of injury due to the increased blood flow the area becomes red and warm and why when the when the blood flow is increased to that area of injury the capillaries supplying to that area they become more permeable they become more permeable to substances so the substances can leave the blood and they can enter into the tissue spaces when the substances enter into the tissue spaces they cause swelling there are some chemicals that are the mediators of this of the changes that are taking place in the capillaries of these substances histamine prostaglandin and leukotrienes are the most important ones there is also another substance which is known as bradykinin bradykinin is an important mediator of pain of the cells that uh, appear at the site of inflammation neutrophils and macrophages are the most important ones both of these cells perform phagocytic function at the site of inflammation or at the site of injury neutrophils appear first and they predominate in the acute pyogenic infections whereas macrophages are more prevalent in chronic or granulomatous infections certain proteins which are collectively known as acute phase response proteins are also produced in inflammation the best known uh, the best known protein of this family is called c reactive protein this c reactive protein is produced by liver and is thought to play an important role in activating the alternative pathway of complementary system these proteins bind to the surface of the bacteria 
and they help in the phagocytosis of those bacteria c reactive protein is also an indicator of inflammation and infection as part of inflammatory response bacteria are engulfed phagocyto phagocytized by polymorphonucleotrophils and macrophages and the neutrophils make up about 60% of the leukocytes in the blood and their number increases significantly during infection this increase in the leukocyte count is called as leukocytosis and there is uh, then there is an opposite condition to the leukocytosis which is known as leuco leukopenia which is called as uh, which is in decrease in the number of leukocytes the increase in neutrophils is caused by the production of granulocyte stimulating factor which is produced by macrophages soon after infection you can see that a diagram that is showing endothelial cells of capillaries and you can see the blood is flowing through the capillary and there are also white blood cells present in the blood these are neutrophils when there is an injury the blood flow is increased to that area of injury and there is also increase in the number of leukocytes in the blood there are certain proteins that are present on the endothelial cells of capillaries and there are some and there and some proteins are present on the surface of the leukocytes these proteins some of these proteins uh, become receptors and some becomes the ligands that are attached to those receptors so in the next slide you can see and a zoomed view of an endothelial cell this endothelial cell has two proteins that are important in the inflammatory response and that are also important in the escaping of the cells from blood into the tissue spaces first protein which is which is shown here as a rectangle rectangular shape in a rectangular shape is called as selectin and other protein is known is called as icam icam stands for intercellular adhesion molecule so these two proteins are present on the endothelial cells next slide you can see that icam receptors are increased by the interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor which is produced by macrophages as an injury occurs in the next slide we can see a phagocyte the cell that performs phagocytosis and this cell has a protein which is called as integrin and this integrin binds with the icam molecule and there are some proteins which are called uh, oligosaccharides these are sugar molecules and there are some glycoproteins present on the cell the leukocyte that bind to the selectin next step in the inflammation and the escaping of the cells from the blood is the retraction of the endo endothelial cells first when there is, there is an injury the pathogen enters into the body and the tissue spaces the blood flow is increased to that area the number of cells is also increased which is called as leukocytosis then the white blood cells that are present in the blood they attach to the walls of the capillaries leukocytes are attached to the endothelial cells now after binding of phagocytes with the endothelial endothelium the endothelial cells retract and create spaces in between through which the cells can or the fluids and the cells that are present in the blood can escape and can migrate towards the tissue spaces this retraction of endothelial cells is because of the chemical mediators such as histamine now the cells working as a phagocyte they attach to the endothelial cells the endothelial cells retract and create spaces and their blood cells can escape from the blood and migrate into the tissue spaces this process of migration of the white blood cells from blood into the tissue spaces is called diapedesis in this diagram you can see the escaping of white blood cells from the endothelial cells 
the species that were created from between the endothelial cells and the white blood cell migrate into the tissue species now let's move towards the phagocytosis phagocytosis is the engulfment of the pathogenic bacteria or viruses that are present at the site of injury so this is performed by phagocytic cells which in which uh, which include neutrophils and macrophages these cells migrate towards the site of injury they ingest those microbes and kill them those events that were happening in those blood vessels such as the increase in the blood flow and then the retraction of the endothelial cells and the escaping of cells from the blood into the tissue spaces those are known as the vascular events of inflammation now here the cells perform their function the phagocytic cells and they engulf the bacteria and pathogens and they kill them so the phagocyte approaches the bacteria with its pseudopod like projections it entraps the bacteria in the form of a vacuum it is known as phagocytosis it is a type of endocytosis in the diagram you can see the phagocyte is engulfing the bacteria in its pseudopods and after entrapping the bacteria into its pseudopods it ingests the bacteria in a, in the form of a vacuum and in this diagram you can see the bacteria is present within the phagocyte and then the bacteria is now entrapped and the lysosomes can bind with the phagosome to make endolysosomes or it is also known as secondary lysosome the lysosomal enzymes are excreted into that vacuole and those enzymes they enter into that vacuole they disintegrate the bacterial cell and the bacteria is killed so this is the process of phago cytosis and the killing of bacteria in the next video we will talk about on the pathways or the processes through which the phagocytes kill these bacterial cells